August the 4th, 2019. You're looking at images from the Solar Dynamics Observatory. It's a satellite that gives us Earth perspective or Earth facing perspective of our sun. And these dark areas are coral openings. You see that right there. And so as they turn Earth facing, then it lets a tremendous amount of solar wind exit in these areas. It's like an opening, like a ship coming by an old um, pirate ship and opening those doors for the cannons to come up is exactly what's happening. And so as it gets even with Earth, like you just saw, it takes a couple of days for the solar wind to get here. It uh, has to travel 93 million miles. And you see these openings at the top, guys. That energy, the magnetic field, goes straight out. It's not looped like the white lines. And the loops capture the energy being emitted from the sun and pull it back to the surface. But these openings do not. And that's what we're going to be dealing with. We dealt with it last week. We saw quakes that got up to 6.9. They're just now easing off. We had a 6.3 just right offshore from the Fukushima incident today. But they're calm now, 319. Now, this is space weather today. It's a very interesting article right in the center saying chance of storms. NOAA forecasters estimate 20 to 25% chance of a G1 class geomagnetic storm tomorrow on the 5th and the 6th when a stream of solar wind is expected to hit Earth's magnetic field. Now, also, just under this article that says the eerie calming of Earth's magnetic field, that's our shields. It's a solar minimum. It's having a calming effect on the Earth's magnetic field. Well, guys, that's what we've been talking about for the last several years. We're going into solar minimum, and our shields are weak. But this is coming from Stuart Green of Preston, Lancashire, UK. During the past three summers, he measured in between the summer and winter equinoxes. 2017, you can see the activity is much stronger on this graph. Now, 2018 and 2019, there's a vast difference. And we saw it weakening over the last three years also. But now we are at this point. We are supposed to, and even the scientists here agree, that we're about to bounce and hit the bottom of this solar minimum cycle or the solar cycle and it will rise back up, but they're going to continue to get weak cycle after cycle that could last 200 years going deeper. But he says, I plotted the changing levels of geomagnetic activity for the months of May, June, and July between the equinoxes for 2017 through 19. He has a research grade magnetometer buried in his backyard. The trend is clearly down with, with less frequent and intense storms in 2019 as the sun continues deeper in the solar minimum. They're saying uh, that normally, if you in this whole thing, they wouldn't even normally talk about a Geo One class magnetic storm, guys, because it's the smallest scale. But with these shields, like I've been saying, also, when we uh, see the solar wind coming in, we really have to watch it. Look what happened last week. It says uh, it, any magnetic storm is news at this point in the solar cycle. And if you look at the current solar wind, I've got it set for today, and we'll back it up and look at uh, seven days. It is between uh, 300 and uh, 350 kilometers per second, very average. But if we back it up now, this is the last seven days. Notice the bottom left. And during this peak, we went from uh, six-point quakes to 6.9 quakes. Again, a 6.3 today uh, offshore in Japan. And uh, in this yellow line, you're seeing it now, calm. But that's about to change, and so we could be moving back into an earthquake watch. Also, in the Atlantic, we're still watching. This was disturbance number two. Now, they are taking it off the charts, basically. They're saying it's just not going to make it through this cycle getting into the Caribbean. But, guys, we will keep a close eye on it. I also want to update the Pacific Ocean. But what you're seeing here in this large area of pressure above the storm is pushing everything south, kind of compressing it, and that would cause it to track into the Caribbean more. If it continues on this pace, there is surface-level rotation, if you look at the picture very closely. Check that out. Now, uh, also in the Pacific, now, this is kind of important in more ways than one, and I'll put a video up at the end of this one. Just watch it. Now, you've got Eric out in front of uh, the Hawaiian Islands now. It is skirting actually out from under these high clouds, but they're being blown back over the islands in this wind shear. 
Flossy is uh, still the tropical depression, and you've got another system that they're watching behind it. Also, that's an interesting uh, storm that's in the uh, Baja up there, guys, in the uh, Sea of California. But this uh, rain that's, again, being moved back across the islands, and then you have Flossy coming in, is something that you may want to watch because... Again, uh, the scientists there at the USGS at the big volcano are watching water fill up in that crater. And uh, again, I'll put that information up at the end of this video. But Flossie, which is coming at you, is 40 mile per hour tropical storm moving 13 miles an hour. And it has dipped in the uh, tracking that we saw yesterday. Gill is behind it 30 miles an hour. We don't know if that one will make it or not. But Flossie is the one to watch. Notice the difference in this cone from the last video. And it's uh, showing that its tropical storm will remain a tropical storm until around 2 p.m. Monday as it starts to buffer the islands. But yesterday, this cone did not touch any of the islands, so it has moved further south. That's going to put more people under the gun. It's just, you know, it's not a major hurricane or anything like that. High wind and high rain, some power outages. And let's take a quick look at the earthquake situation. This is the 6.3. It was 54 kilometers east-northeast of Nami, Japan, 38.6 kilometers deep. And, guys, that is the area of the Fukushima disaster. Then uh, you've got uh, 3.0 up in Manhattan, Montana. A couple of quakes in there in this, this week. But uh, as we pull this in and look at uh, a couple of places, both Hawaii and uh, Southern California, you can see that they're still quakes around the ring of fire in the five point range things like that that could change but if we look at this and let's pull up hawaii just a moment you just got some minor quakes there in the lower ranges and just uh stay tuned as this video ends it's going to come into a report from there from the usgs i'm going to talk about that in a minute but you're getting water in that big crater first time in modern history but in legend it is not the first time Again, here is the Searles Valley, Ridgecrest area. you got 249 quakes there of the uh, 419 that were listed on the entire map. Now, the China Lake Monitor is still off. I showed you that a couple of videos a, a day or two ago. And uh, don't know why it's off. We know that there was some damage or they wouldn't have sent that 100 million almost overnight after that 7.1 quake. But guys, uh, watch the video that's attached to this. It's a heads up. Be safe. In Halemauma'u crater water. It was first spotted in late July, but it wasn't confirmed until today that by the U.S. Geological Survey. Erica Engel has more on a story. This is what we're used to seeing at Kilauea Volcano. Halemauma'u crater has filled with lava and has emptied, and the bottom has collapsed numerous times. But this is what it looks like today. Pictures taken by air starting last Thursday led scientists to take a closer look. They released their own photos today. I think it's really spectacular. However, he's not surprised, since the bottom of the crater is now lower than the top of the underground water table. And I would guess that, barring any kind of disturbance, it will continue to percolate in and eventually equilibrate so that the, the water table and the water level in the crater are more or less the same. Meaning the water level may continue to rise. This is the first time in recorded history that water has been found in Halemaumau, but not all history was recorded. In Hawaiian legends, there are mentions of water in Halemaumau associated with explosions and Pele and Hi'iak. 